Here's how to render in Premiere Pro. Let's jump on it. First, head over to Sequence in the top menu. In the Render section, you will then see Render Effects in to out, Render in to out, Render Selection and Render Audio. First, let's have a look at the most common ones, which are Render in to out and Render Selection. Render in to out will render all clips and effects within a defined range between your in and out points on the timeline. To set an in and out point on the timeline, here's how we do it. Move the playback cursor to the position where you would like to start rendering. Then press I on your keyboard to set the in point. If this shortcut doesn't work for you, you can also go to markers here on top and then click here on mark in. As you can see now, our in point here has indeed changed. We can now do the same with the render out point. So we take the playback cursor here again and let's say we would only like to render until here. So I position the playback cursor right here. And then if you want to use the keyboard shortcut to render, you can press the letter O on your keyboard. If you're having problems with the keyboard shortcut, then, then here as well, just go to markers here on top and this time here, click on mark out. We have now defined the area to be rendered. So now if you want to render this whole section right here, what you have to do is to click here on sequence on top and then select render in to out. Once the selection is rendered, the sequence will automatically play back. We have now successfully rendered this selection right here. You can also see this by the change of color here in the render bar. Before it was yellow, but now it is actually green, which means that the segment now has a rendered preview file associated with it. When you playback your footage, playback will now utilize this preview file, ensuring real-time playback at full quality. Now let's have a look at the second render option, which is render selection. When we click on sequence again here on top, if no clip is selected in the timeline, you will actually see that render selection will then be grayed out. The reason for this is simply that render selection only renders clips or specific items you've selected on the timeline, regardless of the in and out points. So the in and out point that we have set here before are irrelevant for the render selection option. So with that said, if you want to use render selection for a specific clip in your timeline, then all you need to do is to select that clip and then when you go to sequence on top, render selection will now be available. And when you click on it, the clip in the timeline will be rendered. Now, last but not least, when you go to sequence here on top, we also have render effects in to out. So what render effects in to out does is that it actually only renders effects that are between your in and out point. Currently in our timeline right here, we didn't set an in and out point and we also don't have any effects. So using this option wouldn't do a thing in our case right here. So first of all, we would need to have an in point and also an out point like this. And then on top of that, we would also need to have an effect in here so that we could use this feature. So from these three options that we've just seen, the most popular one, or at least the one that I use all the time is actually the render into out option. Because typically before I even start editing something in Premiere Pro, I will render out my main files because this dramatically speeds up the workflow. Especially if you're working on a pretty slow computer, I highly recommend you to render your footage before editing. So for example, if this would be my main clip right here, I would simply make sure to put the cursor here all the way at the beginning. I set my in point, then I go to the very end right here and I set my out point and then I click on sequence here on top and click on render in to out. Now the whole sequence is perfectly rendered and placed back at full quality. Then also whenever you add some effects to your timeline, I highly suggest you to render these out because most of the times when you add an effect to the timeline, you will see that the render bar here actually will become red. And whenever the bar turns red or just part of the bar turns red, I highly recommend you to render these parts because when you hit playback while having red parts here in your render bar, the real time playback at full quality is very unlikely to work. So whenever you see red there, the playback will usually have some issues and will be lagging. So let us drag and drop this effect now onto our timeline just like so. And as you can see now, our render bar here indeed became red. So we have to render this part out. As we've already set an in point and an out point for this selection right here, to render it out, all we need to do is to go to sequence here on top and then click on render in to out. This might take some time, but it's all worth it. And once we've done that, we should see no more red color in our render bar. And there you have it. Our render bar is now completely green again. And when we play back our footage now, it should be buttery smooth. Perfect. Last but not least, let me also say this. It's not an absolute must to render stuff while editing. If you don't do it, it doesn't mean that you cannot export your project. If you just ignore it and then go to file here on top, then go to export and then media and then export your video, then what happens is that Premiere Pro will simply compile the files and will render everything on export. So if you're working on very short or very simple projects and also have a very powerful computer, maybe you don't need to pre-render stuff before actually exporting.
However, if you're using effects and stuff like that, then pre-rendering stuff almost becomes mandatory. And that's it guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel for more Premiere Pro tutorials. Also, if you would like to know where rendered files actually go in Premiere Pro after rendering, then please make sure to watch the next video on this channel.